Today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth, featuring the beautiful new 1974 Chryslers and Plymouths. An ideal football day in the Orange Bowl, Miami. The temperature just under 70 degrees, a slight wind blowing in favor of the team that will be defending the goal on your right. Happy holidays, everybody. Kurt Gowdy with Al DeRogatis. Two are gone. The Redskins and the Steelers have been eliminated. Two more will leave the playoff ramble today. And the Cincinnati Bengals get the first crack of trying to bring down the defending world champs, the Miami Dolphins. Miami against Cincinnati here. Miami's not an old team. It's a young veteran team. But Cincinnati is the youngest team in the playoffs. And we can match them up right down the line, starting with the coaches. First of all, Paul Brown, 65 years old. What a man he's been in pro football. How about Don Schiller? Young, he's done it all. Maybe the greatest 11 years of all time. De determination all the way. Kenny Anderson, just in his third year. He's 24 years old, the starting quarterback for Cincinnati. And how about the poise of Bob Greasy? Here's a man that is as stable as you're going to get. It's probably as stable as Stabler was. Right. The big surprise of the National Football League is this rookie, Booby Clark, who didn't even play in the running back spot in college. That's right, and the man that he's going to be looking at a lot, the man that fullback means, Larry Zonka, number 39. What a moose he is. Bill Berge, number 66, the middle linebacker. This is his sixth year with the team, one of the best in the game. There's probably none smarter than the 12-year veteran from Notre Dame and middle linebacker Nick Bonacanti. A great tribute has been paid this rookie, Isaac Curtis. They're calling him the new Paul Warfield. And here's the old Paul Warfield, a man from Ohio State. And can this man fly? Four touchdowns in one game, 11 out of 29 this year. It's a great matchup. The roar you hear in the background, the Miami Dolphins are taking the field. We've had a look at the Cincinnati Bengals and the Miami Dolphins. They're getting ready for the opening kickoff, and we'll be back in just one minute. Referee will be Bernie Ullman. He's a sales representative for a sporting goods company. The umpire is Joe Connell. He's a district sales manager of a steel company. His 22nd year as a pro official. The head linesman is Walt Peters of Indiana State. He's an insurance agent, lives in Philadelphia. The line judge is Bill Swanson from Lake Forest, Illinois, a manufacturer's representative. The back judge is Ben Tompkins of Texas. He's an attorney now in Fort Worth. The field judge, Joe Gonzalez of Southern Cal, a teacher and a coach in the Los Angeles City Schools. Those are the officials assigned to the playoff game. Miami won the toss. They elect to receive. They're going to defend the goal on your left. They'll be in white. Cincinnati will be kicking off in black on your right. The will be offered by Bishop Rennie Gracida of Miami. Almighty God, Eternal Father, we thank you for this opportunity to witness this contest of great athletes. Bless them, we beseech you. Keep them from all harm. Grant that we may draw inspiration and courage from their conduct here today. This we ask with faith in your mercy. Amen. The national anthem will be sung by Mike Douglas, accompanied by the North Miami Pioneer Band. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what's so bright? 
sold out by 1 p.m. on Thursday, so it is being blacked out here in the Miami area. It has been sold out, though, before game time, so we have a full house here in the Orange Bowl. Don Shula, his last gathering of his defending champs, who set an all-time NFL record, winning 26 regular season games in the last two years. And Paul Brown sends his young Cincinnati team on the field. And I think it's going to be very important this game how Cincinnati gets off. If they don't make early mistakes, we could have something here today. That's right, Kurt. It's the early going. When you've got a young quarterback, the stability of the quarterback is so essential early. Horst Muehlman is going to kick off. Mercury Morris and Charlie Lee are back deep. Morris nearest you. Lee on the far side. A favoring wind of about 10 miles an hour at the back of Horse Mule. The toe meets ball, the clock will officially start. And we are underway. A booming kick. Sails out of the end zone. Touchback, first down Miami. They'll be operating from their 20. Bob Greasy will be the quarterback, number 12. Mercury Morris, number 22. Larry Sock of 39 of the running backs. Marlon Bristol, 86 on one side wide. Paul Warfield, 42 in the other. Marv Fleming is out of the game. Jim Mandich, 88, starting at tight end. At left tackle will be Wayne Moore. Kuchenberg playing with a broken arm at left guard. Langer's at center. Larry Little at right guard. And Norm Evans at right tackle. So Bob Greasy is ready for our first play from scrimmage. And he runs Sonka. Just short of his 25, Ron Carpenter brings him down. Royce Berry, 82 at left end. Mike Reed, 74 at left tackle. Ron Carpenter, 70s at right tackle. And Sherman White, 83s at right end for the Bengals. Bo Champ, 58, left linebacker. Bergie's in the middle, 66. And on the right is Ken Avery, 51. The corners are Riley and Parrish. Casanova starting today after being out with an injury, and Craig are the safety men. Second and six, Miami from their 24. In motion is Briscoe. Mercury Moore, and he's jammed up at his 27-yard line by Al Bochamp and Ron Carpenter. Third down, three to go for Miami. We're seeing what the game plan looks like early. Morris is coming out, kick is going in. They're going to attack the middle. Mike Reed has great speed. If you can take his speed away from him, you might hurt the Bengals. So let's see what Greasy calls now, third and three. He sends Warfield left and Bristol right. And he has Kick and Sonka behind him. Reed got back all right and goes to Kick for the first down. Jim Kick. Hit by Ken Riley. Kick is one of the best running backs coming out of the backfield and catching vital yardage and passing. Let's take a look at Jim Kick, 21. They put him in for a reason. He accomplished his objective. Go short beneath the zone men. First down. All right, Morris goes back in replacing Kick. Who did his job in the one play. Miami's on their 34-yard line with a first down. We're just underway. Two minutes gone and no score. Here's Bristol coming at you. 
Berkeley Morris, 35, 40, makes his turn, has the first down, he goes out and he's 46. He has the best average in pro football, 6.4 a carry. O.J. Simpson averaged six yards a carry. In the pregame show, we talked about power of football. I'm not playing the guard pole. He trapped on Ron Carpenter. Zonka goes into the line. He blocks on the linebacker. And the speed of Mercury Morris breaks it for a first. The Dolphins on their 46 with a first down. And he's back to you, Paul Brown. Slot left for the first time. The pass is knocked down by Sherman White, the defensive right end. Second year man, University of California. Good play. Telecast presented by authority of the Miami Dolphins, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Second down 10, Al. Miami's on their 46. Now with Marv Fleming out of the football game, man to chin, it's supposed to hurt the running attack a bit, but it will help the passing game. A good man to watch is 88 Mandich. They're in that I formation now. Reed is really anxious. Twice he's nearly hopped offside, but he's off the ball today. Mike Reed, if you keep an eye on him, number 74. Larry Sanka is brought down on his... 49 and a half. They'll have a third and seven. Jim Kick goes back in, and Mercury Morris is out. Mike Reed looks fired up today, Al. He has nearly jumped offside twice, got back, but he's ready to move off of that. Boy, step. he is. He's right on his toes, Kurt. He springs. He wants to beat that first man quickly. Third and seven for Miami. Just short of the 50-yard line. Great drop back. Now Greasy pass. Right to Paul Warfield at the 30. First down, Warfield. And he'll be at the Cincinnati 26 or 27. All right, you might use his own defense, but when the man reaches your zone, it becomes man to man. Mandage makes a good move to the inside, pulling the short man. Warfield fakes Ken Riley on a deep move, and you'll see him circle in front of Riley. And Bob Greasy, with plenty of time and credit the offensive line, and there he is, the magnificent Warfield, and he is just something else. Warfield caught 29 passes this year, but he had 11 touchdowns compared to three touchdown receptions last year. Miami moving from their own 20 to the Cincinnati 26. Frisco in motion. Mercury Moore. Coming to the 20. Well, he is Mercury, I'll tell you. Neil Craig, the safety man, had a tackle him. And Bob Kutchenberg, the left guard, 67, with a broken arm, led the way for him. See the broken arm? He's, he has a pin in the forearm uh, embedded in the bone, and they cover it up with a cast. Another first down for the Dolphins on the Cincinnati 16-yard line. Okay, now it's the Cincinnati defense. They're up against it. A beautifully planned drive by Bob Greasy. Almost flawless. If Cincinnati can make Miami settle for a field goal, it's a minor victory. In fact, it's a big victory if they can stop them for the field goal. Standard pro setup. Morris, he's met at the 13-yard line as he tried to burrow over his left guard. Bill Berge, 66 there. Bill Berge. And Sherman White also. There's Berge. We've talked about this man. Moves to the ball as well as any middle linebacker in football and is becoming the premier man. Second down, seven. The Dolphins on the Cincinnati 13-yard line. They have played five minutes of this game. The score, 0-0. And the sun is out brightly here in the Magic City today. Greasy, touchdown to Warfield, Paul Warfield, running a hard slant. He and Greasy teamed up for four touchdowns and one half last week. Miami's on the board with a flawless 80-yard drive. Well, I think the old-timer, if he is old, from Ohio State, has been challenged. Isaac Curtis has been coming on strong. A fake was put on Kent Riley. 
He gets underneath Neil Craig. Beautiful. Perfect time. Gary, a premium to kick. Earl Morrow holding the kick good. 80 yard drive and 10 plays. It took 5 minutes and 23 seconds. A timeout to score the Super Bowl champs, Miami 7, Cincinnati nothing. Alright, the young Cincinnati team has been stung early. Now it's their ball. They're talking to the defensive unit. And back deep will be Bernard Jack uh, Jackson on the far side. Lamar Parrish nearest to you. Gero Yapremium will kick off. A wobbly kick coming to Parrish on the four-yard line. 15, 20, 25, and out to his 27-yard line. He is hit there by Charlie Lee, number 23, covering the kickoff. You know Nottingham, the bowling ball, played for Baltimore, Kent State. And you don't always win in this game. Ken Anderson at quarterback, number 14. Johnson, 19. Booby Clark, 35, are his running backs. Charlie Joyner to the left, 18 wide. And Isaac Curtis, 85, is to the right. The tight end is Trumpy, 84. That's Essence Johnson coming through at the 40 and just upended there. By Jake Scott, or he might have broken the first play. Essex Johnson, who has amazing balance, he missed three yards from gaining a thousand this year. Just three yards short, and he's injured. Oh, this is unfortunate. Here's a replay of it. This is a misdirect. You're hitting away from the flow. They break the gap. Missed by three yards, as Kurt said. The two of them, as we know, have more yards than Zonka and Little. Right, Essex Johnson had 997 yards, and Booby Clark. Yeah. At 988 yards. And a Essex Johnson is out now, and a rookie, Lenville Elliotson from Northeast Missouri State. Or uh, Johnson. It'll be a damaging blow if he doesn't come back. Here's a flare out for Booby Clark. He breaks it, comes up to the 50, and is out of bounds in Miami territory. What a story this fellow's been. Booby Clark from Bethune Cookman. Went on the 12th round. That's Essex Johnson they're working on. But Booby Clark played tight end last year and linebacker the year before. They're putting ice. I have, I think that he has a bruised knee, Al. First down, Cincinnati. They've ripped off two in a row now. They're on the Miami 46-yard line. Booby Clark to the 40, 35. Booby Clark. They're ripping them apart on three plays, the Bengals. Three first downs in a row on three plays from scrimmage. Well, he's doing the thing that a Paul Brown does. A young quarterback, he's going to keep it on the ground, throw the occasional pass. He's using the play that Don Shula loves, that misdirect, hitting with Zonka. But now it's Booby Clark. They've gone 15 yards, 12 yards, and 15 yards. Miami ahead 7-0. Cincinnati threatening. Anderson. Ready for his first pass. And the pass is good to Isaac Curtis, and he's nailed out of bounds on the 22. Isaac Curtis, the fastest man in pro football, has been clocked 9-2 in the 100 at the University of California. They won the NCAA Field and Track Championship. Their title was forfeited. Curtis left school, went to San Diego State, asked to become a wide receiver. Has played only one year in college as wide receiver, one year in the pros. He has caught five touchdown passes his last two games. Five of his nine touchdowns have been for over 50 yards. Another a second down and a yard to go now. And it goes to Elliott. He's stacked up just short of the 20-yard line by Vern Den Herter, number 83. It's good to see number 14, Ken Anderson, come on the way he has. What a great last six games this man has had. We know Paul Brown calls them from the bench, but he's the man that executes out there and deserves great credit. And he's the third leading passer in the conference bell, 54%. Only one man has thrown more touchdown passes in the American Conference. Anderson hit for 18. Charlie Johnson of Denver had 20. Third down and a foot to go. Breaking through is Lenville Elliott. 
the rookie running back, a man that Bob Brown is very high on for the future, unknown when he came to Cincinnati. And he's filling in today for Essex Johnson. All right, now, we know that Manny Fernandez isn't in there. That makes a big difference. Molly Moore is strong. He's getting a big block by Pat Matson. That was a big block. Now, that was a critical play. Bob Matheson is in, and Molly Moore has gone out. Then goes first down. Anderson flips it out, and haul out of bounds is Elliott, or Clark. That's Elliott. Elliott out. And he's out on the 16-yard line, just a yard gain. Essex Johnson started this game, ripped off a 15-yard gain in the first play, hurt his leg, and had to be taken out. And he is a player that has averaged five yards a carry this year, third best runner. There's Fernandez, who has a bad hamstring pull. He hasn't starting. Second down nine for Cincinnati. The figures on Ken Anderson. He's throwing ten touchdown passes in his last four games. Elliott. Stanfield missed him. And Elliott's out of bounds. Maybe a yard loss. Burned and Herter missed him. The other end, Stanfield had a crack at him behind the line of scrimmage. But Elliott slipped away. Anderson's having to go to his safety valve, man. He can't find anyone open downfield. Well, that was kind of a delay screen, actually, but Stanfield read it so very well, he played Rufus Mays to the outside. Third down, long. Okay. This is what makes the Bengals different, Kurt. They've got Joyner, they've got Curtis, they've got Trumpy, and they've got backs that can receive. We might keep our eye on number 84, Bob Trumpy. And a big sellout throng yelling, defense, defense. Third and ten for the Bengals. On the Miami 17. Anderson pass over the head of Isaac Curtis, who was double teamed by Mumford and Dick Anderson. The field goal team comes on. Horst Newman has kicked 21 out of 31. He has hit 11 out of 12 inside the 30 yard line. And this one will be about a 24 yarder, maybe 23. Now it's going to be 24 yards. Low snap, he gets his kick up, it's good, and Cincinnati has scored. So we have a timeout and a score now. Miami 7 and Cincinnati 3. There's Essex Johnson injured on the first play, has a bruised knee, and appears to be getting ready to return to action the next time the Bengals have the ball. Horst Muehlman will kick off. Mercury Morris close, Charlie Lee on the far side. And Muehlman booms it again out of the end zone. Well, Cincinnati drove 56 yards before they were stopped in nine plays and kicked the field goal. And Miami went 80 yards, so the offenses both look sharp today. Next Sunday, the American Football Conference champion will be decided, and our coverage will be preceded by another NFL special edition and followed by NFL report. If Miami wins the game, the championship game would be played here in Miami. If Cincinnati wins today, Oakland would be the host team for the American Football Conference championship next Sunday. We don't know the starting time yet. First down, the Dolphins on their 20. Morris. 27 yard line. You know, Al, the deceiving thing about Morris, he can run inside as well as outside. They think of him as little Mercury Morris, but he weighs 198, and you have to look at his body. His thighs are as powerful as a 230 or 40 pound man. And it was a good call again. They're doing something that we've seen other teams do. They're taking Ron Carpenter, who ordinarily plays inside. You see him walking now. He's now left defensive end. Second down, three to go. Miami on their 27. They're ahead, seven to three. Risco in motion. Sanka trying to drive for that first down, nudging the 30-yard line and would appear to have it. First down, Miami. Al Bochamp made the stop. There's Kuchenberg with a broken arm. 
first downs, six for Miami, four for Cincinnati. Another thing the Bengals are doing is they're putting Mike Reed on the nose of a very, very good center in Jim Langer, just to get the advantage of his spring, number 74. Well, maybe Mike wants to play a little tune on him. First down. That's Morris. He has that room. 35, 40, out of bounds on his 44. First down, Miami again. And that's three times they've broken Morris wide right. Jim Kick replaces Mercury Morris. Put it on a 43. First down. Mercury Morris already has 48 yards in this game and six carries. He's averaging eight yards a carry. Seven to three, Miami. Jim Kick barrels over the 45. And to his 48 yard line. Bergie and Avery, the two linebackers. Bring him down. You know, Bob Kuchenberg has been kind of a, under the shadow of number 66. He's number 67. He's on the left of the center. Kuchenberg drives straight ahead. That's a tough block. He's blocking man-on-man -man against the middle linebacker, firing straight out. Miami is a second and four, a yard and a half short of their 50-yard line. Or a yard short. They're leading 7-3. Greasy pass, dropped by Jim Mandich, Mad Dog they call him, or third down Mandich. He has not signed his contract for 1973. He makes no bones about it, he's unhappy at the money he's getting. Feels he's worth more, that he's not going to worry about his contract until after the season is over. Miami Dolphins, Kurt, have been doing pretty well on third downs. Now they've got another third and short. He has the option. He's been using his receivers extremely well. Warfield has been beating Ken Riley. Pretty good. Miami's made two out of two of their third down plays so far. Bob Greasy's three out of five. He's going to throw for it. And he hits Jim Kick for a first down in the 43-yard line. Bob Greasy, superb in third down play so far. Three out of three. Those are the plays that keep drives going. As we saw yesterday with Ken Stabler, Bob Greasy throwing a very similar type game. He's four, four out of six so far. Watch Warfield. He gets popped, goes down. They were going to pick him up deep, be sure of that. A lot of talk about letting those receivers go free in the future, getting rid of popping them or bumping right. them around. You can see what happened to that pass pattern. Nothing for Warfield. First down, Saka, 40. Carries him with him to the 35 yard line. Larry Saka. They haven't used him as much so far as they normally do. He got eight yards in a play that didn't look like much. You're right. They haven't used him, but he's still the heart of this uh, offense. He and Bob Greasy. Neither one can the Dolphins afford to lose. He keeps everybody on, honest with that power. Now he'll be 27 years old the day after tomorrow. He's a Christmas baby. He gained a thousand yards rushing this year, a thousand and three to be exact. His third successive one thousand yard season. Second down, two to go. That's Briscoe in motion. Mark Remore. At the 30, 25, out of bounds. Boy, he is something today. He didn't play in his last game of the season. But Mark Perry drove him out. He had a bad neck, so they held him out against the Lions, or he would have had another 1,000-yard season probably. He wound up with 954 yards. Well, he's already around 60 yards in this game. We're still in the first period. Miami ahead 7-3. to three. And Miami has the ball on the Cincinnati 24. Nine first downs already for Miami. Mixing him up. Crosser to Mandy. And he's bumped out of bounds by Ken Riley. He goes out on the 11 yard line. It's another first down. You're, you're just seeing a superb offensive machine. 
that player? All right, sure is. Now, Ken Riley was so concerned about that inside move of Paul Warfield that he let Mandage get a bit of a move to the outside, and then Mandage kind of outweighs him. He's only 181 pounds. That's uh, Ken Riley. Made a fine play. Great execution. Tom Greasy, that deadly efficiency of his, Five out of seven already in this game. Larry Sanka and a whistle blew. Sanka stopped by Al Bochamp. Here's a penalty against Miami. This is the least penalized team in pro football this year. They were penalized an average of 30 yards a game. In the National Football Conference, the Vikings were the least penalized team, 34 yards a game. So Miami just doesn't make many mistakes. They just made one now, though. They're dropped back to their 16-yard line in the legal procedure, first and 15, with a minute 41 to go in the first period. Morris, and he's wrapped up. I'll show you how strong he was. He was wrapped up there by Bochamp, who weighs 238 pounds, and Morris nudged him forward a year or two. Don Shula tells Al and me that pound for pound, Morris is the strongest man weightlifting on the Miami team. It's now on the 13-yard line. It is second down, 12 to go. On that previous play, it was a legal procedure against Bob Kuchenberg. Okay. Yesterday we saw the Oakland team run left. Today we're seeing the Dolphins run right. They may be running away from Sherm White, but they should be heading back there soon. Jim kicked back in to team up with Sanka. And there goes Sanka. He is short. Beautifully conceived play. The Bengals definitely looking for the pass. And he slipped it off on the delay to Sanka right up the middle. First and goal to go in the half-yard line. Well, here it is. You're getting as close to it as you're going to get. Reed goes to the outside. He's trapped out. Tackle leads it inside. There goes Zonka, the fullback. First and goal to go for Miami on the Cincinnati one-half-yard line. Now Doug Guzan comes in at left tackle. Wayne Moore goes to tight end along with Jim Manning. That's Monty Moore, by the way, who is the coach of the offensive line on the telephone. Mar Fleming is deactivated today with an injury. So Wayne Moore, a tackle, now takes over the other tight end slot in the twin tight end setup. That's Sanka. Here's a replay of Larry Zonka, sixth touchdown of the year. Earned every, every inch of it. Well, Miami now has put together two 80-yard drives. This last one took 12 plays. The first drive was 10 plays. The premium for the kick out of the hole by Moral is good. And the Dolphins, there's been no stopping them here. In the first period, two 80-yard drives. The last time Cincinnati had the ball, they went 56 yards before they were stopped. The premium now will kick off. The thing we want to keep in mind also is the fact that those are time-consuming drives. I mean, we've seen this offense of Cincinnati. They prove they can move the ball. The Dolphins have been outstanding against the pass. They have been weak this year against the run, believe it or not. If you can be weak with 12 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Parrish and Bernard Jackson are deep for the Bengals. 21 seconds remaining in the first period. The American Football Conference Championship game next Sunday. Either here in Oakland or in Miami or in Oakland. Miami wins, it'll be here. If Cincinnati wins, championship game will be in Oakland. And you'll see it here on NBC. The premium's kick is tumbling to Bernard Jackson on the one. He's out to the 15. And he stopped short 
of his 20-yard line, which is a goal for every kickoff team. Keep them inside their 20, and you have achieved one of your 10 defensive goals of an outstanding defensive game. You can continually do that. Don Nottingham made the tackle. So far, Miami has 172 yards offense to 51 for Cincinnati. Cincinnati hasn't had the ball very much. 12 seconds to go in the first period. Essex Johnson back in the game, teaming up with Booby Clark. First down, Cincinnati. Booby Clark knocked down at his 20 by Mike Cohen, who shot through the taking. And we're just at the end of the first period with the score, Miami 14, Cincinnati 3. Preceding announcement made on behalf of the National Football League. Kurt Gowdy and Al Dero got us into the second period we go. Cincinnati on their 21-yard line, second and seven. Molly Moore's been taken out, and Bob Matheson has replaced him. Anderson behind Essex Johnson. Well, I think that was a lateral pass. Went out of bounds. That ball had stayed in play. Somebody could have picked it up. Always reminds me of the Raiders and the Jets in the championship game when the Raiders let a lateral pass uh, hang around behind the line of scrimmage in a late drive. It was scooped up by Ralph Baker to stop the drive. All right, now here's that situation where the young quarterbacks generally get a, into trouble. There's a lot of poise out there right now for number 14. The interception, if he gets a big rush, is a possibility. Third down seven for Cincinnati from their 21. Isaac Curtis in motion. And he threw that one over the head of Booby Clark. Trying to hit a short man. Cincinnati's held. Fourth down seven. The last two plays, Curtis going down. Anderson looking for him. And Anderson looks a little confused in the last two plays. Well, number one, did you notice, out at this side, they chopped the man down at the line of scrimmage. They took away his primary receiver. That's what Coach Brown was telling us about the last time we were together. Try to eliminate that one. Trying to eliminate, in the future, cutting down those wide men. Jake Scott is deep. Here's Lewis, Dave Lewis, 41 yards a punt. First punt we've had in the game. Going against the wind. And the kick fights into that win. Scott calls a fair catch at his 37-yard line. Make it the 38. And we have a timeout with the score. Miami 14, Cincinnati 3. You can see how Miami's dominated in ball control, running twice as many plays. And look at the time. 10.40 Miami's had the ball. The less than five minutes for Cincinnati. There's Tim Foley. He's back on the active list. He could play today after a shoulder separation. He missed the Super Bowl with a shoulder injury to his other shoulder last year. He's had bad luck with those shoulders. Miami's ball first down under 41. Larry Sock is hit by Bill Berge, number 66, and he really fired in there. Well, he saw that guard pull, and when the guard's been pulling, they've been running very effectively wide, so he shoots the gap. Bill Berge, he's come on. Now, number 60, made, they made their first switch there. Uh, Ron Pritchard is now back in. He has not been starting. Ken Avery has been at right linebacker. Number 60 is in there. There he is. Pritchard from Arizona State on the injured list this year has recovered. Recovered much quicker. Ken Avery was playing stop ball there on that right side. That's right. Second down 10. Miami under 41. And yeah, look at this. There's Pritchard. Blitzing, shooting from his right linebacker, and suddenly the Bengals now start to slow down the Miami running game. Oh, you're right. And they played it so beautifully. They beat the guard, the lead guard. That was the trick. He gets underneath the pulling guard. They were going to be trapping on him. Makes a big play. Now let's see if Greasy can convert another third down situation. Three times he's come up with third and first down yardage needed, and three times he's made it. And that's what kept those two 80-yard drives going for Miami. Right now, he's third and 14. He has Jim Kick in the backfield. Morris is out. Trying to put a rush on. We see there's a pass over the head of Marlon Briscoe. 
So we'll see the first punt in the game now for Miami. And the first time they've been stopped. Larry Seifel, who's had his best year of punting, will be coming on. He finished fourth best in the American Football Conference at 42 and a half yards of punt. Tom Casanova and Lamar Parrish are back deep. Casanova, 37, has had a deep hamstring pull. And he is starting his first game in about five or six games. Medical student, by the way. Out of LSU. Here's the kick by Seifel with the win. Casanova fields it on his 20. Trying to get outside. 25, 30. Casanova's run out of bounds on the 44. We had a near clip on the play, but not quite. The crowd thought it was clipping. And we have another timeout with a score. Miami 14, Cincinnati 3. That's Stuckey. Who's injured right now? They attend him right now. Cincinnati's ball first down on their own 34. They're trailing 14 to 3. Trying to get wide. Essex Johnson can't make it. We're, we're isolating here three plays in a row on Booby Clark and watching the rookie, seeing what he's doing. All right, now he dives into the line. The idea here, maybe you hold the middle linebacker. But when he goes in, Booby takes somebody with him. He makes sure that they're going to just freeze a moment. You know, Kurt, it's interesting. There are very few things that happen on the football field that are unimportant. Absolutely every move has a significance. They, uh, Essex Johnson has taken himself out of the game, and Linville Elliott has come in to replace him. Two rookie running backs right now for Cincinnati, behind the third-year quarterback, Anderson. That's Booby. He's wrapped up. Mike Cullen... Brought him down, the right linebacker of Miami, number 57. And again, another replay on Booby. Now that play worked well earlier. You'll see Lenville Elliott come this way. Booby hits behind the flow, hoping to influence the line. Is Lenville? That's Pat Matson leading, leading it, but they were waiting. Now Booby's in that situation where his hands might help out, Kurt. Third and passing. Essex Johnson. That knee bothering him. Third and six. Cincinnati on their 38-yard line. Anderson pass. Nearly intercepted by Jake Scott. They say when you try and throw deep, or fairly deep, it's like throwing against Miami into a giant vacuum. A vacuum sweeper. Oh, it is really difficult. Scott Anderson laying back there. Quarterbacks dropping. Linebacker's dropping to hit a deep pass on him. Now, why do you take Booby to the outside? Well, simply, a linebacker is going to cover him. The pass is going over the middle. If you pull Bergy this way at all, you open up that middle zone. They tried, they failed. Once again, in punt formation is Dave Lewis. The deep man for Miami will be Jake Scott. That kick bites the wind again. Scott calls for a fair catch in his 25-yard line. Miami's ball. Now, the tempo slowing down offensively as the defensive teams are taking over. We have a timeout. The score, Miami 14, Cincinnati 3. Twelve years, that man, number 85, has been in the pro wars. Nick Bonacani getting a breather now as his offense is back on the field. Morris and Sonka, the running backs. We were talking about Larry Sonka gaining a thousand yards three uh, years in a row. Only four other NFL backs have ever done it. Jimmy Brown, Roy Kelly, Jim Taylor, and John Rocky. Mark Morris. Morris stacked up by Sherman White, the right end. The young line there. Barry's playing his fifth year at left end for Cincinnati. Mike Reed, his fourth year. Carpenter, his fourth year. And White, his second year. Second down. Six to go. The Dolphins on their 29. They're ahead in this game. 14 to 3. 11 minutes to play in the first half. Sonka on his own. No help that time. On his own. Scrambles out to his 35 yard line. From the ground level, the line play. 
the pulling guards. That's Wayne Moore, number 79. Zonka leading. And actually, he stumbles. He had a huge hole in there. Could have gone a long way on that one. First down, Miami. It's interesting to watch the way number 34, Neil Craig, plays. Neil is a very challenging, strong safety. He's playing Mandage a bit to the outside. That's Shula's son in front of Earl uh, Morrow. That's Davey Shula. But Jim Mandage is deceptive. Jim can beat you deep. Miami now has 13 first downs. Cincinnati has four. Miami from their 35. Casey shoots the pass, takes it to the tight end, Jim Mandy, a remarkable pass receiver. Fleming is a better blocker. He can help the running game more than Mandy can. Mandy is almost like a wide receiver in reception. Catches the ball in a crowd and then can run with it after he gets it. All right, we were talking about Jim Mandy. He scratches all the time. Neil Craig drops off. That was the zone. The linebacker was to pick him up over the middle. They were there. Perfect pass. Now it's a great situation for the quarterback. Second and short. Second down, two to go. Miami under 43 yard line. They're ahead 14 to 3. Briscoe coming in motion. Sanka is stopped on the 44 yard line by Bill Berge. Number 66, the middle linebacker. So that makes it now third down, a yard to go. On New Year's Day, following the Rose Bowl, here in the Orange Bowl at 7.45 Eastern Time, LSU against Penn State, outstanding running backs Brad Lewis and the top college player of the year, the Heisman Trophy winner John Capaletti. In addition, halftime pageantry, saluting Walt Disney's 50th anniversary. NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Third and one. Wayne Moore goes to tight end. Doug Suzanne, the left tackle. Greasy's going to throw on third and one. He's going to Warfield, and it's caught by Warfield. I thought Neil Craig had a chance to bat that ball away. It hung up there, but Warfield came up with it on the eight-yard line. First and goal. Well, I've never seen many better routes than that was run, and I'll tell you what he did right at the end. Paul Warfield slowed up just enough. It was possible, Kurt, that Neil Craig would have gotten to the ball. But when Paul slowed up, Craig kind of slowed up also, or else it would have been interference. Here it is again. Offensive line. Plenty of time. The wind is at its back. Perfect position. Oh, what hands. Paul Warfield. This is a running ball club mostly, Miami. Two to one over passing. You wonder what Warfield would do, even with ten years behind him, with a club that threw the ball a lot. First and goal to go. Flags go down. A lot of movement on both teams, maybe. Cincinnati hopping around. Paul Warfield in his first half already has caught three passes for 85 yards. That one's against Cincinnati. Overly anxious. Trying to beat the snap. Now the Bengals are putting their goal line defense on the field. And in reverse, the the uh, Dolphins are putting Wayne Moore. Doug Crusan is in. Kick comes out. Uh, Marlon Briscoe also comes out. So now you've got Morris, Zonka, great blocking up front. It looks like it should be a run, doesn't it? Could be. You know, Greasy's having one of those neurosurgeon days of his where he just takes a scalpel and picks you apart with that cool dispatch. He's uh, not an emotional man, or at least he doesn't let you see much emotion. And today he's already completed 7 out of 10. You saw him operate in the Super Bowl last year when he missed most of the season after a fractured ankle. He just does it with real precision. First and goal to go. And his pass off the hands of Warfield. Warfield trying to slant in the back of the end zone. Ken Riley there with him. Warfield, I should have had him. Well, you know, I said it sure looks like run, doesn't it? But you know what Greasy does. He kind of figures you think run, I pass. You think pass, I run. They have a second down and four to go for a touchdown. Miami's already ahead 14-3. to 
Seven minutes, 42 seconds to play. The winner of this game meets Oakland next Sunday for the American Football Conference Championship on NBC. Mercury gets the ball. He has it. Mercury ball. Just another excellent call. Another excellent call on the part of Bob Greasy. Looks like inside, crosses outside. Warfield puts a great block. In comes the man. Can't stop that kind of speed and strength. Well, that drive of Miami goes 75 yards. They started from their 25. They've now had three drives of 80, 80, and 75. The premium's kick is good. And the defending world champs, the Miami Dolphins, playing with flawless precision today, now build a 21-3 lead. We'll take time out with a score. Miami 21, Cincinnati 3. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Gary Yepremian sporting the new brush over his lip. Started with a pencil thin one, now he has quite a mustache. Boots it high. Amar Parrish is going to down it for the touchback. After he studied the situation, he said, boys, I think we'll start from the 20. There's Jim Manage, the tight end. Still hasn't signed his contract this year. He's already caught two passes in the first half. Okay, critical time, obviously, of the football game for the Bengals. Now if they put it up in the air, if they panic at all, Kurt, this game could, could blow wide open. The strategy here might be try to get a drive together. You're down, sure. One touchdown before the half would be big, 7.30. Miami has run 32 plays so far to 15 for Cincinnati. The Bengals in a slot right. Anderson coming out of bounds it goes to... Charlie Joyner. Joyner was injured most of the year. He's from Grambling College. They gave two running backs, Robinson and Willis, to Houston for him. They wanted that outside speed. And Ken Anderson. Now when Paul Brown has been in this position in the past, second and long, he's loved the screen. He's loved the draw. Nick Bonaconti will be looking for Booby Clark on the draw. Kenny Anderson, four out of ten. He hasn't had a pass intercepted in his last six games. He had the best pass interception percentage in the conference. That pass was complete. And incomplete now. They say he did not have possession or control. The official waited to see if he could do the axe common to football with it. In other words, did he have possession and did he turn or was he in control of the ball? And they ruled no. You'll you'll watch the judgment here on the rerun now. Now Jake Scott comes up very quickly, and that's what they do so well. They come up, pops it out, no control. Well, Dick Anderson and Jake Scott are an outstanding combination. Maybe the two best in pro football back deep. They are hard hitters. They come up to stop the run, and they're very difficult to throw again. Last six Anderson passes have been incomplete. Third and ten. This pass is complete. Anderson nailed that one. A remarkable catch by Charlie Joyner. Joyner has helped Isaac Curtis. The Joyner has excellent speed, too. It used to be one-sided. Good offensive line protection. A great catch by Charlie Joyner. How he did it, I don't know, because he really gets popped. All right, the Bengals on their 38 for the first down. The score, 21 to three, Miami. 6.44 to go in the first half. Curtis is to the left and Joyner to the right. Two speed burners. And Trumpy the tight end to move. Here's a reverse for Curtis. Curtis trying to shake. And it was spelled out by Miami. Bob Hines the tackle. Scott coming up from the safety, but Hines, 72, made the hit on a double reverse to Booby Clark, handed off to flanker Isaac Curtis. 
There are several things that give that kind of play away. Number one, the man on the offside that Isaac Curtis was in front of. Once Isaac started to his right, that man yelled reverse. The offside, the side that he's coming to, then got ready for him. Bird then heard her, also smelled it out. Excellent pursuit. I call them the warm swarm. The warm swarm. That will go down in history, that quote. <laughs> Second down, 11. Bengals are being hurt, I believe, by Essex Johnson's not being in there with his bad knee and hurt in the first play. Anderson flips the pass, dropped by Linville Elliott, Essex Johnson's replacement. You know, uh, Cincinnati has done more as an expansion team than any team since pro football expanded. The Bengals have won 37 regular season games in their six-year history. It's the highest total ever for an expansion team. They've had three winning years in their first six years. They're having troubles right now in the first half. They're going against a puzzling defense. Every team has trouble against this Miami defense. It's complicated zone. They come up with a good pass rush. Elliott to the 40, and my Cincinnati will have to relinquish the ball. Bonacani and Matheson make the play. Miami allows the fewest points the last two years of pro football. Yeah, I, they say, how do they do it? All I can tell you, everybody's there at the right place at the right time. Tremendous discipline. Only five touchdown passes all year against them. That's just, you know, unheard of, isn't it? Dave Lewis to punt against the wind to Jake Scott. Five minutes to go in the first half, and the score is 21 to 3, Miami. We're in the first half. Nearly blocked. And has rushed the putter. Anderson takes it and has dropped on his 32 yard line. The Rose Bowl game on January 1st. That'll start at 4.30 Eastern Time. Ohio State against USC. Archie Griffin and Anthony Davis will be running. Five of those players made the unanimous All-American team the consensus All-American. Ohio State coming back for revenge. NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. First down, Miami. They're on their 32-yard line. They're leading 21-3. They were made about an 8-10 to 10 point pick in this game, despite the fact that Cincinnati finished with a rush, putting their last six in a row. Sanka straight ahead. Not much. A yard. Bill Berge tackled him. You know, it's the little things that Bob Greasy and Don Shula do together. There's Berge. And one of them is he knows he's got four minutes and less than 30 to go now. He would like to eat up as much time, like to get three points if he can. He knows he's got the wind to his back. It's going to be interesting. Shula on the sideline. That's Doug Cousin with him, 77. They've been using him quite a bit also. Well, players from the Dolphins have been selected to the Pro Bowl game in Kansas City, January 20th. Where NBC will be telecasting. Mercury Morris following Larry Little, 40. And he has stopped at the 44, loose ball, but Miami has it. Larry Little leading the way. There he is. Quite a story. Mercury Morris this year broke loose at a touchdown run, and Larry Little ran with him stride for stride at the blocker. Yeah, but here's the other thing. Yeah. He hurt his shoulder. This is a big one. Now, it looked like it was perfectly sound. Larry Little, you're right. I made that mistake earlier when I said the... They outrush Zonka and Little. Well, maybe I was right a bit, because Little, when he comes out there, Neil Craig didn't know quite what to do with him. Jim Kick has replaced Mercury Morris. We'll have to check on his entry now. He's on the bench. The Dolphins have a first down on their 43-yard line, 3.37 to go in the half. Miami leading 21-3. Hold oh, on, there you go. Neil Craig has it. Neil Craig scores, and that should help the young Bengals. Greg pick it off, meant for man, he got in the flat. The first mistake that Greasy's made today. That's right, we saw Terry Bradshaw do that yesterday, and now we see an experienced man do it. Neil Craig will tell you after this game, I was sure they were going to go there. He read that, he gambled. I can remember Evelyn Tunnell doing this years ago. Here it is again. He knew as soon as he released it, it was a mistake. Perfect timing by Neil Craig. 
no way Bob Greasy was going to catch him. A big play, big. That looked about 40 yards, 45 yards. And the kick is good by Horst Muehlman. And that should give the Cincinnati team a big lift to grab that touchdown and point here toward the end of the half. Now a program note, Peter Fox stars as Colombo with a rumpled cigar with Martin Sheen, Vera Miles, and Vincent Price on the Sunday mystery movie tonight at 8.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 Central Time, right here on NBC. Vincent Price. What a voice. On these kickoffs, the wind is a factor. He's kicking into the wind. He will probably not get it into the end zone. That wind is, is very strong. So we'll probably see a run back. That force him up front that will be leading the wedge. Uh, worth watching. I see that Mercury's going in, Kurt. Mercury's back, but Essex Johnson now has had a diagnosis of a stretched knee ligament and may not play the rest of the game. Mercury Morris and Charlie Lee will be deep. It is now... 21 to 10, Miami. Newman will kick off against the Breeze. And this is a fine kick. Out of the end zone for a touchback. All right, here unofficially, fans, so far in this half, Miami, 250 yards total offense. Almost perfectly balanced. 128 rushing, 122 passing. 250 yards total for Miami, Cincinnati, 83 yards. So the Dolphins have about three times as much, and they're the number of plays for you. Yet Cincinnati's right back in now with that pass interception. Miami's ball on their 20. First down. Morris, Sanka, running back. Sanka with the ball, and he stopped behind the line. And pouring in there on him, Bill Berge again. Bill Berge's biggest rooster, and Al DeRogatis is, is not personal about this. Yesterday, he was raving to me about Berge, and I'll say what I've seen today in the first half, Berge has been magnificent. Well, in that middle, you know, he just came on so well. This whole team has come on, but Berge in particular. He's shooting the gap now when that guard is pulling, and he's just following him out. Second down, 13 to go for the Dolphins on their 17-yard line. They're going to operate out of the I formation. Flags are down. I saw a Bengal player move, hop back, and then I saw a movement maybe in Miami. Motion, that's right, that was it. I wonder if that wasn't Warfield that moved. But the backfield of motion is declined. The ball is on the 18 yard line, they lost the down. Third down and 12 to go for the Dolphins. 2.38 to play in the half. On third down plays, Miami's converted four times out of five. They've had drive today 80, 80, and 75. They're leading 21 to 10. This will be a third and 12 call. They run the draw, and they're stopped. Sanka stopped by Ron Carpenter. So the ball now will be on the 23-yard line, a five-yard gain. We'll have fourth down and seven, and Larry Seipel will punt as Don Shula yells out to his glove. That's Earl Morrill, his backup quarterback beside him. 43-year-old Don Shula played for Paul Brown 1951 and 1952. He and Carl Tassa. Brown's assistant, uh, Shula's assistant coach, were both signed together in Paul Brown's office. And uh, Shula tells the story. Brown said, we'll give you 5000 bucks." Shula says, give me the pen. <laughs> so quick, uh, Brown couldn't get the words out. The two-minute, we'll finish this story, the two-minute warning given. With timeout to score, Miami 21, Cincinnati 10. Larry Seifel will punt it. He's had one punt today for 43 yards. He has the wind behind him. Casanova and Parrish are deep for the Bengals. The kick is away. It's a high floater. Taken by Parrish on his 25. He's to the 30. And he's hauled down on his 33-yard line. 
And down to cover that, Larry Ball, number 51. Crowd booing, they thought Cincinnati had either held or clipped again. Boy, this has been a sudden turn of events. Now, really, it's 21-10, 1 minute and 46 to go. That interception by Neil Craig can do things to a team. They know if they get a score here, they're in pretty good position for that second half. First down for the Bengals on their 33. Their offense has not been doing it, but their defense has just scored for them on the intercepted pass by Craig. Booby Clark, he's met at the 36-yard line by Doug Swift. A gain of three, second down, seven. Bob Hines assisting. Block moving now with a minute, 32 to go and a half. Miami ahead, 21-10. This is where it's nice to have Isaac Curtis. 9-3 speed in this situation, and they've been, they put a few big ones together. All right, they put Curtis and Joyner on the same side to the right in the slot. Second down, seven. is hit by Bill Stanfield, number 84, having his best year, his fourth, fifth year with Miami. Anderson couldn't find anyone open. And now Cincinnati has called timeout. They have two left. The Dolphins have three left, a minute three to go. Getting back to that Shula story and Carl Tassif, they played at John Carroll College together. They went in to sign the contract, and Shula says, let's celebrate. Let's go down and have a beer. They went down, and Shula Got so elated, he ordered, ordered a martini. The first one he ever had and the last one. He got sick afterwards. <laughs> but that's how he was broken in with the presence of Paul Brown. He played for him in 51-52. Don Shula has been a very gracious man here this week in the press on our NFL special edition yesterday in praising Paul Brown, saying that he was fortunate to play for him and that Paul Brown will go down in history as one of the great men of pro football. I told Paul Brown about the graciousness of Shula this week. He said, it doesn't surprise me. He's a gentleman. He's a friend of mine. So is his wife, Dorothy, and my wife. And I'm not surprised a bit. Third downs today. Cincinnati's hit two out of six. 21 to 10, Miami. A minute three to go in the half. A flare out to Booby Clark. He's at the 40, fighting for that first down, and he fights for it and has it. At his 44-yard line, he's taken down by Vern Denherter. Bob Matheson putting the pressure on. Denherter, here is one of the most improved players in pro football. From his rookie year to now, what giant strides he's made, unheralded coming out of little Central Iowa College. You're wondering why Isaac Curtis isn't getting out. They're popping him at the line of scrimmage. Mike Cole in particular. 30 seconds to go in the half. Now Anderson is hit and brought. We have the first sack. Bill Stanfield, 84, slapped him down. That's the first sack of the game. You're right, this 53 defense of the Miami Dolphins really makes it four linebackers with a three rush or the fourth man could rush. This time, you're seeing doubles all over and Stanfield gets around it. Isaac Curtis, as we told you at the start of the game, caught nine touchdown passes this year, five in his last two games. Five of those nine passes have been for over 50 yards or more. He has been the long bomb man in pro football this year. He and Harold Jackson of the Rams. But today, Isaac Curtis is being bumped, checked, knocked down. The Dallas Cowboys did it to him, and the Dolphins are doing it to him. Curtis is not getting clear from the line of scrimmage. That's the trick. 57, Mike Cole has been doing most of it. Mike might, by the way, get caught for holding on one of these plays because Curtis was by him, and Mike was still pulling on... Uh, Isaac's jersey. So that's why they go to join her, or maybe they'll go to a back. It's tough to get him out of there. You just saw a shot of Nick Bonacani and Bill Arnsbarger. Bill Arnsbarger is the man behind the scenes. He's in charge of the Dolphins defense, and he is the assistant head coach. There he is, Bill Arnsbarger. Every head coach will tell you they owe so much to their staff. And Arnsbarger has been a great man for Shula. Second down and 14 for the Bengals from their 40 yard line. 25 seconds to go in the half. Anderson coming out of the pocket. Runs for the 40. 
up to the 50, 45, 40 of Miami. They're moving into field goal position. They have one timeout left. And they call timeout. Or did they? 22-yard gain by Ken Anderson, who came out of the pocket. And it's at the 38-and-a-half-yard line. The Bengals did call time and stop the clock. They're out of timeouts now. It was Kenny Anderson. As he was going down, he was almost calling timeouts. And how many times have I seen Otto Graham do that? That's been a play that's been with Paul Brown so long. It's devastating. You're looking for the pass, and the man runs, and he goes a long distance. Great field goal position. Horse Muehlman is not outstanding long range. He's hit 16 out of 21 inside the 40. He's had one from the 50-yard line. He's kicking this against the wind. It's about a 10 or 12 mile an hour wind, a 46-yard attempt. 14 seconds to go. The kick is up. This kick is good. And Cincinnati has scored 10 points here in the last four minutes of the first half. And they're back in this one. That interception by Neil Craig. Now let's take a look at horse movement. Someone said they may not have grass in Germany because he loves the kick off the artificial surface. I like it. After the play. Remember that sequence we had yesterday yeah. on NFL Special Edition? Some of the fun times and ironically some of the most exciting seconds come after the play. You know, he's kicking tremendously well because we said earlier we doubted whether he'd get into the end zone with this big wind coming in, and it's pretty big, and it's coming in off the water, which is a distance down, but it's coming in, and he's going to do it again. That's Larry Ball shaking up. Now there are eight seconds to go, and Cincinnati will kick off. It's 21-13. The Bengals at one time are trailing 21-3. This is a squibbler. <laughs> And it's rolling around down there in the five. Ripley Morse really fumbled the ball. It's a loose ball. And let's see what they're going to call it. Coming up with the ball is Jim LeClaire. But had the whistle blowing. Seven seconds to go, and they waved it over to Cincinnati. Cincinnati recovers on the five-yard line. This Jim LeClaire came up with it. And suddenly the Super Bowl champs are starting to make the mistakes, and the young Bengals are coming on. Watch this one. Mercury Morris can't find the handle. I'm not sure Murky was really making a move now. He should have been falling on that ball just to recover it. That's LeClaire scooping it up. And another field goal now. Dave Lewis holding for Muehlman. 13 yards with seven seconds to go. The kick is up, it's good. Two field goals in six seconds for Cincinnati. They have scored 13 points in the last three and a half minutes. And there's your score now. And you're gonna have some playoff game going here. Don Shula looking up at the clock and the score and the time. What's happened? We're supposed to have the point. That's why we won it all last year. That's why we were undefeated. You know, when a young team gets hot, they can really get hot, Al. They sure can. I can remember again, forgive me for going back, a Paul Brown game. The Giants are playing the Cleveland Browns. The Browns kicked off. A receiver of ours, an excellent guy, Jimmy Austin Darp, a coach at Amherst, a coach of Doug Swift. He let the ball go dead on the one-foot line with just this much time to go, and the Browns went in the score. Now, this is the next time I've seen it, and Paul Brown's team did it again. Jimmy Austin done. Forgive me for reminding them. Four seconds to go. Dick Anderson has the ball. Time is out. He's tackled. On that field goal with eight seconds, the Bengals went for the sure three points and got it on that short field goal range. LeClaire, who recovered that fumble against Cincinnati, three more points. Just made the tackle in Anderson. What a wind up to this first half. And the score at the end of the half now, Miami 21, Cincinnati 16.